Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving and welcome to our Thanksgiving episode. Today we're watching Knives Out, and of course I'm Noah. And I am Greg. Man, it sucks working on Thanksgiving. It does, but we kick this fucking chef's ass. Because you want to know why? Because we're the best dishwashers that ever fucking lived. That's true. At least we don't have to work Christmas, right Greg? I have bad news. Greg? Oh, god damn it. Oh my god, these fucking old people trying to gnaw through the turkey bones. Dude, every time they get a turkey leg, they try to eat it, and it makes me sick. Because all I get is like a garbled mess that has teeth stuck in it. Look at it! Uh, at least they give us a free turkey. Yeah, I guess. No, did you notice that there's a lot of knives on the line? I guess you could say our knives are out. Yeah, there's a lot of knives. Like, these are we don't even own some of these. Whose knives are these? And why are they out? Why are these knives out? That's the last joke I'm going to make like that. I watch Knives Out. Oh, I did too, Noah. It's a classic also, Thanksgiving movie. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, everyone, by the way, from your people at Pearl's Retirement Home. <laughs> Merch coming uh, soon. I feel like we're becoming an insane asylum. We're, we're not? Anyway, so Knives Out is the greatest Thanksgiving movie uh, ever made. I have a job? Y yes, Greg, you have a job. Okay. Yeah, Knives Out. Best Thanksgiving movie ever made. And if you can think of other Thanksgiving movies, please let me know, because I couldn't think of any others that weren't Hallmark movies. <laughs> uh, Thanksgiving, unfortunately, is overshadowed by Christmas all the fucking time. I'm not ready for Christmas. I can't stand Mariah Carey. Cannot stand that woman. Doesn't help they keep her sealed for freshness most of the year and then <laughs> let her out. <laughs> oh my god. So, I guess we'll start with our spoiler-free review. Uh, yep, we're doing Knives another out. one of these. <laughs> Knives Out is a 2019 mystery movie written and directed by Ryan Johnson, who you might know who directed movies such as Star Wars Episode Don't 8. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Significant improvement. <sighs> There's a lot of great twists and turns, a lot of things you do not see coming, and I'll give you the general beginning of the movie where there's no spoilers, where um, there's a very rich writer, he's in his 80s. Harlan Thrombey. Harlan Thrombey. And their maid finds him dead in his study. So the whole family is sort of kept in the house, and they're questioned by a detective who was hired anonymously, uh, Blanc, right? Yeah, Benoit oh, Blanc, who is from Kentucky. The uh, names don't stick in my head too well for some reason. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, who's played by Daniel Craig. Yeah, that was a fucking um, culture shock, seeing Daniel Craig without an English accent. Oh, then you need to watch uh, Luck and Logie because he does another southern accent, but it's more of like a, a deep south, not really a draw southern accent. It's pretty good. Do people from Kentucky have draws or is it just fucking straight accent? I'm not sure. I've, I've, I've never him. met someone who has had like, you know, that southern draw, but they say they're from Kentucky. I have, <laughs> I have but that's I've I've been to the southern United States a lot. I've been it's, in Texas a lot. Yeah, it's always from Texas. It's always from Texas. I never hear of any other southern state that has that, that kind of finesse of the accent. Blanc is what uh, some people refer to as the last of the gentleman detectives. The gentleman sleuths. Yes, yes, the sleuths. Yeah, emphasis on that by um, the adopted sister. And you learn pretty quickly that almost everyone in this movie, besides the detective, um, the maid, and uh, his healthcare worker, Marta, is a horrible person. 
Yeah, it's that's kind of the real movie, I would say, mm-hmm. is like discovering everyone's personalities and what they have to hide. Because mm-hmm. this is a mystery movie that's inside of a mystery movie. Yes. Because for most of the movie, you don't actually know the mystery is going on. You're very jarred and thrown around. Mm-hmm. And it's a hurricane of emotion, I would say. I think that it, it does a great job expressing the uncomfortableness of being trapped with your family for long periods <laughs> of time. When they brought up politics in this movie, which I thought was clever, I cringed. <laughs> I got uncomfortable, yeah. I got uncomfortable for the people in this movie. For actors. I <laughs> I got uncomfortable for for these people. People that don't exist. <laughs> Greg did a Greg had an emotion. I know, it's very rare. Don't quote me on it. I I have very rare emotions outside of anger and pessimism. Please stop. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I this is probably one of the only 2019 movies that I would give above an 8 out of 10. Really? Because Avengers Endgame came out in 2019. I said one of the only. Obviously, there's more. Goober. Sorry. It's okay. (laughs) Um, This isn't fucking Platform. Fucking fuck Mm -hmm. that movie. That's a horrible movie. Don't go see that movie. But, uh... Yeah. uh, Knives Out... Uh, I won't. I wouldn't give it a full ten out of ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's just. I'll go into that later after the spoiler free. Actually, immediately after the spoiler free, I'll go into that. But yeah, some of the performances weren't the greatest, and that's probably why I would lower it down a little bit. Oh, I don't think that. I think everyone was perfectly portrayed in this movie. Okay. Sometimes Except maybe Marta. That's Marta's fair. actress kind of came off at some points where I was like, I don't really believe your disbelief right now. Mm-hmm. But most of the movie, she was very good. Daniel Rack or not Daniel Radcliffe's, <laughs> I'm thinking about Harry Potter episode. Daniel Craig's accent kind of uh, threw me off sometimes. Oh my God. Speaking of culture shock, fucking mm-hmm. uh, Chris Evans. <laughs> yeah. Chris I mean, Evans is, is an asshole in this movie. And com- I mean, coming from the fact that we, all of us literally just watched Marvel, Marvel the series, Chris Evans, this is like his first movie since, right? Like, this is his first movie since the Marvel mm-hmm. Universe? It's definitely one of them. Um, yeah, like, I it wasn't so much as a culture shock to me because I've seen him play a lot of assholes in the past. Um, even when he was in Fantastic Four, he still kind of played an asshole. Yeah, he was an asshole in Fantastic. But like, I'm just saying, like, it's been so long since I've seen him play an asshole mm-hmm. that That's I've fair. associated him with this beacon of justice and I can do this righteousness. All day. <laughs> I could do this all day, he says as he eats a cookie. <laughs> ah. I was just waiting in this movie for Robert Downey Jr. to come out of nowhere and say, can you knock it off? We need you out here. (laughs) Oh, But anyway, yeah. This Um, is Captain America's coma dream. (laughs) This movie is free on Amazon Prime. That's where I watched it. Yep, that's how I rewatched it again, too. Yeah. Get out there. Go get it. I'm serious. It's delicious. You'll love it. It's good. Besides the turkey. It's good. Turkey's really delicious good. too. It it portrays the perfect amount of uncomfortableness for the holiday. <laughs> uh, all right, that's the end of the spoiler-free review. Y'all can leave. Mm-hmm. All right. So now to the reason why I gave this movie a nine out of ten, which I know is pretty high, mm-hmm. but the reason why it didn't hit that final mark for me was because the the mystery for the viewer stopped at a certain point, and then the rest of the movie, we didn't know a mystery was going on. Yeah, I thought that was kind of genius. Um, I did too, but at the same time, 
it felt kind of like uh like it was missing something kind of like when i wa- rewatching this movie is a completely different feeling yes yes my first viewing is very like after they showed us uh him killing himself because marta uh, supposedly gave him the wrong medication that was going to kill him um i was very annoyed yeah I'm my guard annoyed. went down completely and like i was a little bit unhappy for a while and then the movie like slapped me and said <laughs> get wrecked and i was like you're you're correct i got wrecked um, yeah i uh transitioned from this is interesting to this is fun and then mm-hmm. to this is interesting again <laughs> <laughs> it, it hits you it hits you mm-hmm. i think this is a great movie to watch with other people who have not seen this movie yeah would you say this movie is socially critical in certain parts um I mean, she calls one of her family members an alt-right troll, and then later on they refer to him as joylessly masturbating to pictures of dead deer. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I I like this movie because it, it, it was kind of critical of political people, because mm-hmm. you have the one side that's considered, you know, the, the evil people, like, I, I'm not trying to get political, but... Most mm-hmm. people view right-winged people as, like, kind of, I, I don't want to say evil, but not nice, you know? Yeah. And then you have uh, left-winged people who kind of think they're heroes all the time. Mm-hmm. And that movie portrays this fantastically because the people who are defending Marta get her nationality wrong all the time because they don't actually care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love yeah. that. <laughs> everyone's horrible um i don't remember the girl who plays the college girl i just know her from 13 reasons why which by the way my mini review of 13 reasons why is it sucks anyway (laughs) oh my god dude like that character was probably the most um well-rounded of the family Mm -hmm. but she kind of annoyed me too she was the most understandable. Um, you could tell in the beginning she really cared about Marta and wanted her to keep the money until like her mother told her they were flat broke and she couldn't pay for her college. And then like Yeah, that relatable. And then like you could tell like when she was on the phone, she was struggling with right and wrong, and her family was like pushing her to do wrong. <laughs> I felt bad for her a lot of the times. Uh, she was the one character I honestly felt a lot of sympathy for, besides uh, Marta and uh, what was the author's name again? Jesus Christ! Wait, wait, are you asking for the entire family or no? Just the uh, the author's name, um, Harlan. Harlan, thank you, Harlan. Which is a weird name, but I actually kind of like that name. Mm-hmm. Honestly, a lot of people have weird names. Uh, Chris Evans' character, Ransom. Stood in my head a lot um, because it's just so weird to hear someone refer to as Ransom. Even though his name is Hugh, uh, everyone in the family calls him Ransom. I can't remember Ransom's parents' names. Mm -hmm. Um, Fuck, I kind of have... It's in the back of my mind uh, what the the blonde-haired bitch's name. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember her name. God damn it, I'm going to have to pull up the cast. <laughs> don't hurt me. Trust me, I, I don't blame you. I have a hard time remembering names. Alright, J- uh, Joni. Mm-hmm. So Joni is Meg's mom. And I think how we should handle this review is we should start off by giving all the background for the characters. Okay. So Joni's motive, like potential motive for her killing Harlan, is that Harlan cut her off for uh, money, uh, tuition money for Meg, but also mm-hmm. because Joni was stealing some of that money. She was double dipping. Yeah. He was paying the university, uh, and he was also paying her, even though he didn't know he was doing it twice. Um, I don't remember why. There was some workaround. Like, there was a direct deposit for the university. But uh, his, what was it, uh, secretary was also sending her a check. Something like that. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, the secretary was also sending a check. 
while the direct deposit was being filed. And Mm -hmm. then the next character that has a motive is Walt. Walt has the motive of killing Harlan because... So Walt ran Harlan's production company for his books. Mm -hmm. And Harlan said... You know, they're not your books, they're my books. You should go do your own thing because Walt mm-hmm. was wanting to sell the book rights to movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Harlan didn't agree with that and Walt was getting angry, so Harlan fired Walt. Told him to fuck off. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> and uh like, it's pretty accurate. Yeah, the the actor who plays Walt, by the way, uh what's his name uh michael shannon the guy who played Mm -hmm. uh fuck superman villain (laughs) i every time i see that actor i just i quote superman i will find him (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't take him seriously in this movie i don't know why but i loved him all the same i liked walt (laughs) walt was kind of what was kind of the character that like kind of came off as like a really ignorant father? Because mm-hmm. like he didn't understand why his son was like a racist and stuff like this, <laughs> and then he didn't. He just he just knew that people were being assholes and he hated people. That's he's just bitter. He's just a bitter <laughs> dumb dude. And then mm-hmm. Richard, Richard is the next character that has a motive. Richard uh, was cheating on his wife, Jamie Lee Curtis, perpetually old. Yes. Mm. and Harlan found out about it and threatened to reveal it to Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. Let me scroll for a second. Linda. Mm -hmm. Linda. (laughs) Threatened to tell Linda, stop roasting me silently. I'm not. With your benevolent profile picture. Leave me alone. (laughs) Sorry, I'm just thinking about Jamie Lee Curtis trying to kill you with her Activia money again. No. Oh God. Uh, yeah. We're gonna have to reference Jamie Lee Curtis and her Activia money every single holiday, right? Because <laughs> we did it for Halloween. Oh God. Anyway, <laughs> I have to write that down for Christmas. <laughs> anyway, so Richard w- wants doesn't want Linda to find out about the affair, mm. so that's his motive for killing. Ransom had a fight with Harlan Mm -hmm. that nobody knows about, but it just has to pertain to the will. We find that out Mm -hmm. later. And that's it. That's all the motives. Well, Ransom was just a jackass to begin with. Like, he was planning on cutting him off a long time ago. And Linda didn't care too much because she had her own money, right? She was a successful author as well. Linda just wanted the house. Linda Mm -hmm. didn't have a motive for killing Harlan, though. Yeah. All right. Now that that's done, we're going to get into the actual story. And surprise, Mm -hmm. nobody murdered Harlan. Harlan... Kind of. Yeah, Harlan for the movie was believed it's revealed that Marta gave him the wrong medicine and Mm. Harlan didn't want her to be responsible for his death. So he killed himself. Mm. So Marta, um, sneaks out of the house, sneaks back into the house to, uh, do some things like it's still Harlan. Harlan's there. Harlan's alive and it throws off the family. So that's where Mm. the mystery of the movie closes. For now. Emphasis mm-hmm. on for now. And we're treated into this like kind of witty like adventure movie mm-hmm. where Marta teams up with Ransom because Marta was so nice to Harlan that Harlan didn't give anyone anything in his will. He gave everything yeah. to Marta. Mm. And if it's found out that Marta was responsible for Harlan's death. Uh, she can't keep it. It has to go to the mm-hmm. family. Yeah. What'd you think of that, Noah? 
I thought it was clever, and I like how it pays off at the end when you find out Marta was not only good at her job, she was amazing at her job. Oh yeah. So for the first half of this movie, it's almost like a bottle episode of like a TV show where everything takes place in one location, and I thought it was going to stay like that for the entire movie. So I was a little jarred when they started shifting locations a little bit. Not going to lie. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, an old-timey, like, we lock down the house and figure out who this murderer is movie. That kind of would have been fun. I was pleasantly surprised, though. This movie kept me guessing, which not a whole lot of movies can do that anymore, because I know too much about film theory. Um, Shut up. (laughs) Anyway, yeah. Ryan Johnson subverted my expectations. Ryan Johnson didn't do anything. He got lucky with this movie, all right? Leave me alone. Anyway, um, I wouldn't say this movie had me guessing. I would say this movie surprised me often Mm -hmm. with how not only fun it was, but with the twist at the end. Because Mm -hmm. we go from the house, uh, the announcement that Marta gets everything, to Marta and Ransom the two literally polar opposite characters of the story Mm -hmm. coming together to work together. Because Ransom wants his will. He wants his money. Wants his part of it. Mm -hmm. But he also pretends that he wants Marta to keep everything. Yeah, he does a great job not acting like an asshole for half the movie. (laughs) Yeah. Acting with an acting. It's true. Yeah. He also has a pretty cool car. Yes. I guess you're going to have to sell the Beamer. But I assume most rich people have cool cars. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to make matters worse, Marta is not only trying to cover things up, but she is named the assistant of Detective Benoit Blanc. So she is yes. constantly by his side. Mm -hmm. And this throws a wrench in a lot of things. Marta can't tell a lie. Oh, yeah. Marta cannot tell a lie. That's the thing. She throws up whenever she tells a lie. I don't know if that's a real condition or not. I hope it is. I don't think That would be fun. I think it was was because uh, she gets too stressed when she does it, and that's why she throws up. Yeah. And then she comes up with a clever (laughs) alibi. Uh, a clever way of telling how things happened without actually telling how things happened. Mm-hmm. That was very smart. This movie's very smart. It's very smart. Yes, it is. And then we go on this literal adventure of Marta uh, getting information, covering things up. And it turns out Marta was her own worst villain in this movie. Mm-hmm. Because, as it turns out, if Marta did nothing, you know, nothing would have come up. Yeah, if she would have uh, called the ambulance like she wanted to do. Harlan would be alive. Harlan would have survived, yep. But, you know, Harlan's a mystery writer. He's dramatic as hell. I think this is exactly how he wanted to go out, to be completely honest. (laughs) Yes, this is it. I think he was waiting for this. I am so ready. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, Harlan wrote down uh, what Marta accidentally did as a potential murder method. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why was that notepad not taken in by the police and then looked at? Maybe did he give her that notepad? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a that's a detail. That that's a detail they left out. Eight out of ten. It goes down. Eight out of ten. <laughs> that's a that's a plot hole. Yeah, that's a legitimate plot hole because he legit wrote it down. This movie is filled with unlikable characters, but it makes you want to keep watching, which is weird because I can't stand movies with unlikable people. I eventually stop watching. Really? Yeah. um, It's just, like, I think about, like, shows like Torchwood, 
And I'm like, I can't even finish the first couple of episodes of that show. I just, I hated everyone so much I turned it off. Well, as you know, me, the person who has anger management issues, anger is my natural state. So (laughs) getting angry at characters in a movie makes me happy. The more I hate, the more happy I am. I hate. (laughs) I hate. Anyway, um, so the detectives and Marta. Marta is literally Saint Capri. Mm Mm-hmm. In this fucking movie, and that's the whole reason why Harlan mm. gave her the inheritance is because yes. Marta isn't related at all to the Thrombies. He's she's mm. just the Harlan's caretaker, and she did her job so well. She was such a good friend to Harlan that Harlan decided to give her the will. Yep, and that's the that that you're really rooting for Marta, even though most of the movie you recognize mm. her as the villain. Like, technically, you, you recognize Marta as the villain, but you're like, Marta's the only good fucking person. Mm. For me, the way I justified it was Harlem trusted her and wanted her to have this, and, like, he was okay um, with dying the way I he died. I actually thought this movie was going to end with And therefore, that made Marta me put my trust in her as well. There was a, there was a time, like, uh, when Marta was in the hospital telling everything to Benoit, I, I thought... Dude, there's no way she can get out of this. Like, she just confessed to the cop. Like, I legit thought there was going to be a bad ending to this movie. (laughs) But, Mm -hmm. no, it came back. Came back in Mm -hmm. the end. There's not really a lot that we can talk about the middle part of this movie. Other than there are a lot of... Mm -hmm. So, watch this movie with subtitles off. Mm -hmm. Because there's a part in the movie that you're meant to mishear. Um, when, what's her name? The maid. Um, she Mm -hmm. says, Hugh did this like ransom. Ransom's name is Hugh. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you hear her say you did this. And I don't know if the subtitles reveal that or not. Cause I was watching this with friends and I was like, no, wait, we have to turn off subtitles. And they were like, what the fuck? Why? Why do we have to turn off subtitles? And I was like, trust me. I'll be right back. (laughs) No. You're going to see if the subtitles were give the movie away? I'm going to be pulling this up while we're talking about this. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Yes. Yes, um, I am. So, oh, what else do we have to talk about? Well, I mean, like, okay. So, we'll get more of the story. Um, Ransom is helping her, but then Ransom gets arrested. I can't remember, remember the reason why Ransom gets arrested, but he does. And being a little bitch boy he is, he rats out Marta. And Marta's like, oh, it's okay. I completely understand. And then fucking Detective Benoit Blanc turns into a Japanese mm-hmm. uh, anime villain. He goes, ho, ho, sorry, I could And fucking just like pulls out this whole cap of information on poor Chris Evans, who's just being destroyed more than Thanos did in Endgame. Just beating the hell out of him, really, with fucking detective information. So, for those of you who haven't watched this movie and are still watching the spoiler review, cool. Um, It's revealed that Ransom actually did switch the vials for Marta to poison Harlan and Marta actually gave him the wrong vial because she wasn't actually supposed to know which one she gave him but the thing is the density in the liquids she felt so she gave Harlan the right medicine but it was with the wrong label on it and that's why she freaked out Mm -hmm. yeah she was so good at her job that she didn't even kill him when it was almost trying to make her. Uh, so that's the big twist mm-hmm. where you it's revealed that the movie was a mystery all along. Your ignorant ass just didn't know it. And it's also super satisfying because Marta... Yeah, it's very smart. Uh, so earlier in the movie, Marta meets with the person who has mm-hmm. the in- information that's potentially incriminating. So... And Fran, the maid, is sitting there in a chair. She's been drugged. And Mm -hmm. she dies from that drug 
and it's revealed that Ransom Ransom admits to poisoning her, mm-hmm. but Marta lies and says that Fran survived that. <clears throat> so Ransom's like, oh, so what? I got a good lawyer. I'll be out in a few years. And then he's going to make Marta's life hell. And then Marta throws up on Ransom, and it's revealed she lied. Fran died, which is sad. Imagine imagine the perspective of the doctor on the other side, though. When she said, doctor, that's great news, and the, the, he's just holding the phone. I just told you Fran died. Okay, so this just in. The subtitle said you. Not Hugh. So they said the right thing? Okay, good. That's good, that's good, that's good. All right. Fear's over, you can watch with subtitles. Yes. I give you permission to. Yeah, that was just... (laughs) Back to that joke, though. The doctor on the other side. Fran died. Doctor, that's great news. I just told you that Fran died. Oh, and the detectives were recording the conversation. Yeah, that was a little on the nose. 7 out of 10. <clears throat> yeah, and so Ransom is uh, booked for murder. Because he admitted to poisoning Fran and Fran died from it. Boom. Boom, bam. Wrapped. Mm-hmm. And we see Chris, Ev- Chris mm-hmm. Evans in handcuffs, which is... It's fucking weird, surreal. It's it's very nice that this movie has a good ending, and I one of the last things that's said in this movie is Marta talking to Blanc, and she says, "Should I help them? I should help them, right?" And he says, "I have my own opinions." <laughs> yeah, like, so it it's it doesn't actually say what Marta ends up doing in the end, but there's a lot of hints as mm-hmm. to what she does. I think so, the coffee cup hints. Yeah, the coffee well, cup. Which just says, my house, my, my house. coffee. So it, it hints that Marta doesn't actually give them anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Linda also finds out about her husband cheating and all yep. that stuff. So it, it has a very satisfying ending. And I would like to bring up something because I think this is a good movie. This can be a short episode. Uh <laughs> Uh, it's a Thanksgiving the, special. Yeah, the last thing I really want to bring up is that they're making a sequel to this movie. And they're making a sequel. Hollywood. Yes. yes What's are. it about? I don't know, but Daniel Craig has signed on to play the detective again. Oh, ooh, wait! But like, this is going to be a series about Daniel Craig solving murders. Hmm. Ah, actually, it's Ryan Johnson. I'm not excited. Ryan Johnson's a good writer. He's hey, written he's a lot asshole. of things. He you ruined my he, life. He wrote Looper. I don't care. You ruined everything. Oh, Star Wars sucked to begin with anyway. Don't care. <laughs> don't want to hear just it. Ad- just admit it. Star Wars nope. was never actually good. Nope. Don't want to hear it. Everyone only likes Star Wars because of the nostalgia. Shut That's up. It. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Like, even of the original trilogy, like what? I guess Empire Strikes Back is the best. No, but even stop. then, it's still a weak no, movie. Stop. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, movie's superb. But Hollywood, please, please stop making sequels to everything. Please stop. Yeah, <laughs> Hollywood, watch earlier episodes. We go on a rant. Just knock it off. Knock it off. I mean, sure, I got excited for the sequel. Sure, sure. All right, fine. Mm-hmm. Fine. I'm a dumb normie, okay? Fine. I I'm look if it's a good movie I will look forward to it. Trust me. When I when I heard that John Wick was becoming a franchise, I was pretty disheartened until I saw the second one and it was amazing. Caveat: Don't mm-hmm. make sequels to movies that are older than fifteen years. That's fair. Don't do it. <sighs> anyway, think you're ready to wrap up this Thanksgiving shift? Do you wanna? Want to steal some turkey? Oh, hell yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Marco made some stuffing, too. Oh, nice, nice. I love it when Marco makes the stuffing. Great, he's great, too. Fuck yeah, dude. 
right. Get uh, get one of those mixing bowls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just take all of this, dude. Fuck this. Dude, I have what? like 20 plates at home from this place. I do too. All I right, everyone. Pan. Happy Thanksgiving and good night. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Enjoy your awkward conversations and your turkey. Ooh, family time. Family time. Good night. Good night. Hi, this is Noah from Post Production. If you're wondering who edits these, well, that would be me. Anyway, if you like the show, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. We'll be on iTunes soon, so I'll keep you updated for that. And if you want to help support the show, check out our Patreon. Anything you could give would help.